Hello everyone, today we'll be discussing adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is a gynecological condition that is characterized by ectopic endometrial tissue within the uterine myometrium. This condition was first described in 1860 and the histopathologic findings was termed as cystosarcoma adenoids uterinum. While the histology is well described, the etiology of adenomyosis is not known definitely. So there are several, several theories that have been postulated. Though the most commonly accepted theory is that adenomyosis results from a disrupted boundary between the deepest layer of the endometrium, which is the endometrium basalis, and the underlying myometrium. This process leads to a life leads to a cycle of inappropriate endometrial proliferation into the myometrium with subsequent small vessel angiogenesis as well as adjacent myometrial smooth muscle hypertrophy and hypoplasia. The pathophysiology in appropriate endometrial tissue proliferation within the myometrium leads to symptoms through a variety of mechanisms. Normal endometrial tissue is responsible for prostaglandin production, which drives the contractions of menstruation. Ectopic foci of adenomyosis leads to increased levels of prostaglandins, which result in dysmenorrhea, which mainly characterizes the disease. Estrogen also drives endometrial proliferation, which medical therapies aim to reduce. Then the heavy menstrual bleeding that is commonly seen in adenomyosis is thought to be caused by a combination of factors which include increased endometrial surface area, increased vascularization, abnormal uterine contraction, and increased cell signaling molecules such as prostaglandins, eicosanoids, and estrogen. Histopathology Histologic diagnosis of adenomyosis is the presence of endometrial stroma and glandular tissue within the smooth muscle of the myometrium. So there are different definitions of required depth of invasion that, of invasion that exist. Some use an absolute measurement between 2.5 to 8 millimeters, while for others they use a percentage. Then there are also several histologic grading classifications that attempt to characterize the burden of the disease. History and physical examination. The clinical diagnosis of adenomyosis is difficult as a variety of common gynecologic conditions share the signs and symptoms. However, the most common symptom includes heavy menstrual bleeding or, or pain, painful menses, which is dysmenorrhea. Clinical diagnostic accuracy is neither sensitive nor specific. Then there are other less common symptoms that include chronic pelvic pain and dyspareunia. It's also crucial to note that up to 33% of women with adenomyosis may be asymptomatic. While infertility is often considered a potential presenting symptom, the data is inconclusive. On physical examination, there is demonstration of a boggy and large uterus that is due to the combined effects of increased vascularization from ectopic endometrial tissue and smooth muscle proliferation. As compared to the enlarged leomyomatous uterus, a tender uterus is more common in adenomyosis. Evaluation So generally when we talk about lab evaluation, it's generally useful to rule out other diseases. Okay, So common evaluation that we use for adenomyosis are radiological evaluation which include ultrasound and MRI. So an ultrasound, transvaginal ultrasound, is the preferred diagnostic imaging modality for adenomyosis. There you're able to see endometrial infiltration, smooth muscle proliferation, and you're able to demonstrate the vascularity by color Doppler. Then for MRI, characteristic findings on MRI par parallel the same features that are seen on ultrasound scan. So you're able to see a uterine enlarged uterine enlargement that is characterized by ill-defined low signal intensity regions within the junctional zone. So this is reflective of smooth muscle hypoplasia. You may be able to notice myometrial cysts that reflect regions of ectopic endometrial tissue. And you don't really need contrast enhanced MRI for diagnosis of adenomyosis. 
Treatment or management. So the first consideration in treatment selection is the desire for fertility, which will guide treatment considerations. When we talk about the definitive cure, hysterectomy is it. However, the remaining options target the primary symptoms of heavy, painful menstrual bleeding while preserving the uterus. Medical therapies. So NSAIDs are one of the primary medical therapies. These medications target the cyclooxygenase enzyme, which produces the prostaglandins responsible for painful cramping during menstruation. There are various hormonal therapies that are available, which include oral contraceptive pills, levonorgestrel intrauterine devices, the IUDs, denazole, and aromatase inhibitors. So these therapies aim to reduce the estrogenic effects, which leads to endometrial proliferation. Then we have minimally invasive or surgical therapies. So several interventional radiologic procedures exist. So this may be options for a patient who fails medical therapy but desires future fertility. That is, they do not want a hysterectomy to be done. So they can do an MRI guided and ultrasound guided high intensity ultrasound thermal ablation that can be done to target focal disease. Uterine artery embolization reduces blood flow to the uterus as a whole, thereby inducing necrosis that leads to an overall reduction in uterine size. Myomectomy and partial hysterectomy are more invasive options that aim to preserve fertility. These options allow for targeting of deeper foci, however subsequent scarring may lead to disease recurrence as the endometrial myometrial interface is disrupted, which is a risk factor for adenomyosis. Then, as we said earlier, hysterectomy is the definitive cure for adenomyosis. That's all about adenomyosis. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you.